What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Rodell, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving an aggressive and dynamic response against the move D4. Now, if one of you asked me what my style of play was, I would probably go with aggressive and attacking. I love positions that are in balance, and I love positions in which I could fight for the win. And oftentimes, it's very hard to do this against the move D4. I mean, many players hate the move D4 because it's hard to find an option that really gives black a chance to fight for the win. I mean, true, there is openings like the Binko Gambit, but usually white is pretty prepared for the Binko Gambit and doesn't even have to accept the pawn. And in addition, there's openings like the Nimzo or Bogo Indian. I myself played the Nimzo Indian and Bogo Indian for about 10 years, but honestly, most of the positions I got were pretty boring. There wasn't much going on, and it was pretty hard to fight for a win. None of the moves I played required any level of creativity. How can we play aggressively against d4 and also play sound how can we go after the king on e1 but also play a move that takes white out of his or her preparation well today i'm going to be recommending the very dangerous move c5 and with c5 we have the old benoni defense now guys i'm just warning you if you do not want to fight for the win in an aggressive matter if you're more of a karpovian type player where you, you know, you really enjoy chess strategy, chess endgames, maneuvering the pieces around. This opening might not be for you. Now, yes, in this opening, it does require a high level of chess strategy and a high level of maneuvering the pieces. But usually after the C5 move, you're either going to win or lose. The position is so imbalanced and it's really hard for either side to make the position drosh. Now, after C5, the basic question is why not? just take on c5 and you know i've seen this a lot white can very easily fall into trouble with this i mean white can just take the pawn and now we play the move e6 looking to take the pawn on c5 with tempo now guys this isn't normal usually against d4 we're going to eventually play c5 usually have to move the bishop and then move it again but right now we're able to take the pawn with tempo but what if white doesn't want to do this what if white gets greedy and really wants to hold on to the pawn with a move like b4? Well, now we can play a5, and after the move c3, it may seem after pawn takes and pawn takes that white has officially and successfully held on to a pawn, but now we have the very dangerous move, queen f6, piercing down on the rook on a1, and on move 5, white is already going to lose a rook. There's really no way for white to stop this. I mean, it is true, white can play knight c3, giving up a knight, but after this, we can take the knight, play a move like queen a3 or queen to b2, and black is completely winning this game. So guys, it's really not a good idea for white to take this pawn and try to hold on to the pawn on c5. The most popular option is the move d5. And against d5, we're going to play another shocking move with e5. Now, guys, there are other options against d5 that are a little bit more passive and are still good. I mean, we could play d6. We can play g6, Fianchetto wing the bishop. We can play knight f6. There's a lot of different options here, but I'm giving you guys the most aggressive variation of the old Benoni defense with the move e5. And let's just look at this position real quick. What if d takes e6? What if white decides to use the old impassant rule? Well, now we play f takes e6, taking towards the center of the board. And after the move e4, we now push with d five guys and usually in this position white will play a move like knight f3 in which we can now play knight f6 or knight c6 i think knight c6 is the most popular option for black and here after a move let's just say e5 now black can play knight g e7 followed by the move g6 an eventual queen b6 putting pressure on that pawn on b2 and i really do like black's game here so guys, as tempting as it is, I really don't think white's best option is to end Pissant the pawn on e5. The most popular move for white is e4, in which case we're now going to play d6, and after a move like knight c3, play knight f6. Now, usually in this position, you're going to see white play a quiet move like knight f3, a good move just naturally developing the pieces, making it one step closer to castle and kingside. But what if white plays the move f4? Now, when I first, you know, started analyzing this opening about a couple months ago before I started playing it, I was pretty worried about this f4 idea. I mean, now white is threatening to take on e5, but now we can take on f4, and after bishop takes f4, play g6. It may seem as if this pawn on d6 is very weak, 
but if we're prepared, we can adequately defend it and eventually put one of our pieces on this e5 square. After the move, knight f3, we're now going to play a6 because both the bishop and the knight would really like to come to that b5 square. So we're just going to lock that down right away. And after the move, a4, play bishop g7, bring our bishop to g4. And after castles kingside, we're going to castle kingside now. And let's just say a move like h3 is played. Well, now we're going to take the knight on f3. And yes, guys, we just gave up a bishop for a knight. But by doing this, we're making the e5 square more obtainable for our pieces. And after bishop takes f3, we're now going to play the move knight e8. Now, I know some of you guys are probably wondering, like, what, what are we doing right now? Why would we ever want to play knight e8? Well, really, by doing this, we're activating the bishop on g7. And we're also using this knight to defend the pawn on d6. For quite a while now, this knight on e8 is going to stay here and be a defender for the pawn on d6, keeping our position locked up. And we're now going to use the knight on b8 to d7 to e5 or f6. Let's say the move queen d2 is played. Well, now we're going to play knight d7, followed by the move knight e5, taking up that e5 position. And after a move like bishop e2, we can play b6. I got this from a grandmaster game played in the Netherlands quite a few years ago. And after knight d1, the grandmaster continued with knight f6, followed by knight fd7, and black definitely has a solid game here with pretty solid activated pieces. A strong fianchetto bishop on g7, a strong knight pair taking up the e5 position. And next we're going to be able to play a move like queen e7, maybe bring the rook to e8, and we're just playing chess. So guys, as scary as it may be, I really don't think that f4 offers much of a threat to black, and I think black has a very even game after this move. Let's take a look at the main option with knight f3. Well now guys, we're just going to continue to develop, and it really doesn't matter what white does. I mean, there's not much white can do from stopping us from playing g6, followed by bishop g7, followed by castles, and the move knight e8. Now again guys, this knight e8 move may seem passive, but it's actually very aggressive. And in this case, we're actually preparing to make an f5 push. We want to play f5, followed by f takes e4 or f4, taking space up on the king side of the board, and eventually and aggressively going after the king on g1. Now let's say the move knight c4 is played. Again, this purpose of this move knight e8 is two-sided. First off, it defends the pawn on d6, and second off, it prepares this f5 push. After the move knight c4, we're now going to play knight d7, followed by the move a6. Oftentimes, white will want to play the move knight b5 and put pressure on that pawn on d6. So we're going to play a6, just locking up any possibility of that. And after the move a5, we can now play queen e7, followed by the move f5. Now, just to give you guys an understanding, this is very common for this variation. We're going to fianchetto our bishop, castle kingside, bring the knight to e8, knight to d7, pawn to f5, and queen to e7. And by doing this, it may seem pretty passive, but we have a very solid position here, a wall that is very hard for white to break. And after the move, say, bishop d3, now our attacking chess begins with the move f4. And after f4, we can play the move queen g5. And here I really do like black's position, guys. After the move f3, we can now continue to push with the moves h5, followed by h4. And after a move like, say, h3, we can now play knight df6. Remember, this knight on e8 has to stay here because it's defending that d6 pawn. After knight df6, we then have attacking chess with both the knight eventually coming to h5 and g3 and the bishop right now threatening bishop takes h3. We're going to continue to attack on the king side and personally I like black's game more. White does have some space on the queen side of the board but let's just say white plays knight b6. Well that's totally okay. Here we can just play rook b8 and there's really not much more ground that at least at the moment white can do. I mean Sure, white can take the bishop, and after rook takes c8, play knight a4. But really, guys, what we have here is a race. White going on the queen side of the board and black going on the king side of the board. One of black's most solid options right now is knight h5, looking to pounce the knight into g3, and we're just playing fun attacking chess. Again, guys, remember that this was out of the move d4, and I'm just warning you guys, most white players would not be comfortable 
in this position. I myself, if we're having a race, would much rather be attacking the opponent's king than just the opponent's pieces on one side of the board. If a move, like knight b6, well now we can play knight g3. We don't really care that knight b6 was played, because with knight g3, we attack both the queen and the rook on f1, and here we have a pretty fun game. Again, guys, I really do believe in this opening, and it all depends on your comfort level. You know, if you do enjoy making the game dynamic and taking your opponent out of preparation, this opening could be for you. I think it's important to remember that this is with white's best play. I mean, guys, I was showing you the main line for white. This is if white is best prepared. We're still going to get some attacking chess. I mean, let's go back to our first move with c5. Especially if you're under 2,000, let alone under 1,600, this c5 move is dangerous. I mean, it's very easy for white to want to snatch the pawn and after e6, defend it. But again, now we have a5, take the pawn off the board, and with queen f6, we again are winning a rook on move 5. So guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video on the old Benoni defense. Let me know what you guys thought of it, and let me know what other openings you'd like to see covered on this channel. I do enjoy doing these openings for you guys. And this one in particular is uh, close to my heart. You know, it took me a long time to find an opening against D4 that I really enjoyed, but I've had a lot of fun with this opening and a lot of success with it. I really do hate Bogo Indian, Nimzo Indian type positions, Slav defense positions where, you know, both sides, the moves are pretty, you know, they're coming and not a lot of creativity involved. I always like to imbalance the position and I always like to put my opponent outside of his or her comfort zone. So again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm wishing you guys a great day. Peace. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch another one, you can click or tap up here. And I've got a lot more high-quality chess content on the way. So if you'd like to subscribe, you can click or tap down here. I really appreciate your support.